اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير الحمد لله رب العالمين إنه خير ناصر ومعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد طب القلوب ودوائها ونور أبصارها وعلى أهل بيته الذين ذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا محمد وعلى محمد قالت فاطمة الزهراء صلوات الله وسلامه عليها صل على محمد وعلى محمد أيها الناس اعلموا أني فاطمة وأبي محمد أقول عودا وبدا ولا أقول ما أقول غلطا ولا أفعل ما أفعل شططا For the love of Fatima to Zahra with the loudest of our voices sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad For the love of Aba Abdullah al-Husayn with the loudest of our voices sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad And for the purification of our hearts and hastening of the reappearance of our beloved the 12th Imam with the loudest of our voices sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farjum Once again, mu'mineen and mu'minat we thank Almighty Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala for giving us this wonderful moment to commemorate the painful departure of the Lady of Light, Fatima to Zahra, Salawatullahi wa Salamahu wa Aleha. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa achil farajah. Last night, if you recall very well, Mu'mineen and Mu'minat, we looked at Fatima alayhi salam or alayha salam missionary rules. We discussed her roles when it comes to the land of Fadak. We looked at the two major asks she had. Responses given to her. And we presented some Islamic responses in those regards. We then looked at her role when it comes to administering social justice. And then the last stage last night, we looked at some of her social roles or her contributions to social cohesion and life. The line I've just quoted now is a very powerful line. And this line is from the sermon of the lady of light. You remember very well last night. I asked a question. As to. What are the main legacies. Of the lady of light. And. Alhamdulillah some of you. Mentioned. Some of her amazing legacies. First one. Being. Tasbih. This tasbih. Is a great legacy. Of the lady of light. The second one. My dear brothers and sisters. Is. Al khutubatul fadakiyah. The khutubah of fadak. And that is. What we are going to discuss tonight. Inshallah. The third legacy. Which will inshallah come in tomorrow's discussion. Is Mus'haf of Fatima. Is also one legacy. Of this great lady. 
And so the topic of tonight is a very interesting topic. We're looking at the intellectual legacy of Fatima alayhi salam. And when discussing the intellectual legacy of this great lady, the first thing that comes to mind is al khutbatul Fadaqiyya. So the examination of tonight is of the following three stages. The first stage, we will look at the philosophy of religion. Falsafa to deen, they call. Second stage of our examination, will then focus on some very important lessons we can extract from the khutbah of Fadak. Then the last stage of our examination, we'll look at what is called maqasidu sharia, the objectives of sharia within the khutbah of Fadak. You know, as a lover and a follower of this great lady, it is of great importance that now and then we go through this khutbah to appreciate the message of this great lady. Because if you skim the khutbah, you will not be able to appreciate it properly. You need to take your time, go through each and every line of this great sermon to appreciate what Sayyidatun Nisa'il Alameen one went through and how she expect her lovers and followers to conduct themselves. So kindly pay attention. As usual, we'll do it back and forth, two-way traffic. First stage of our examination is falsafa to deen. Philosophy of religion. To understand what is philosophy of it's a bit philosophical discussion tonight. So I really seek your maximum attention. To understand what is philosophy of religion, we need to understand the following. What is deen? What is sharia? And what are the dimensions of the philosophy of religion? When we understand this, we will appreciate what philosophy of religion is all about. Thereafter, things will become very easier in appreciating some of those powerful lines in the sermon of this great lady, Az-Zahara alayhi salam. So first stage, what is religion or deen? And what is sharia? So if I may ask the audience, what do you understand by deen? What comes to mind? Huh? Okay, uncle is saying deen is a way of life. True, that's what we often hear. Referring to Islam as a way of life. Meaning what? Islam comes to each and every aspect of our lives. There is nothing left unturned from the Holy Quran. So we have general guidelines on how to live our lives from the Holy Quran. So that's a general sort of definition of what deen is all about. Please, brothers, try to understand this discussion of tonight. It's crucial. Any other definition of deen? What do you understand by deen? Anyone here? Uh huh. Deen is what? Okay, Deen is the word mamla. Okay, so it's a way of life. Muhammad of Deen, as uncle mentioned, it's a way of life. It tells us what we need to do, what we're not supposed to do, the do's and don'ts. So, as I said, that's a general understanding of what Deen is all about. And then, my brother. Okay, he's saying deen is your faith. True. It's our faith. But then, 
we need to be able to appreciate what this faith is all about. What it contains is, is important. But yeah, last one. Okay. Okay. Habibi saying Dean is our ability to reach our full potential. That's okay. These are all good. Now I would like to draw your attention to what Dean is all about. Mu'minin and mu'minat. Dean is what responds to four fundamental questions in our life. Now, these questions and their answers are what Dean is all about. You see, when you go, when you go to Quran, you check chapter Shura, verse 13. Allah makes it crystal clear. There's a difference between Dean and Sharia. Shara'a lakum mina deen ma wassa bihi nuhan. Walladhi awhayna ilayk. وَمَا وَسَيْنَا بِهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَإِيسَى أَنَ أَقِيمُ الدِّينَ وَلَا تَتَفَرَّكُ This ayah is telling us all prophets of Allah came with one deen. But then each one of them came with different sharia. Look at Quran chapter Ali Imran verse 3. Quran 3 verse 3. إِنَّ الدِّينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ Deen in the sight of Allah is Islam. Meaning what? Musa, Isa, Adam, Nuh. All of them came with Islam. What is Islam? To submit wholeheartedly to the command and the instruction of the creator. What is Deen? Deen responds to four fundamental questions. First question. What is the beginning or the origin? Mabda. Meaning what? Where were you from? Dean responds to that. What's your origin? That's the first thing Dean responds to. The second fundamental question Dean responds to. Muntaha. The ending. Where are you going? Oh, fine. Now I know my origin. I know my beginning. What's my ending? Dean responds to that. The third fundamental question Dean responds to is what? What is the link between the beginning and the end? Dean responds to that. And then the last question Dean responds to is what? What is the purpose of my existence? These are the four fundamental questions. Deen is all about. And if you go to Quran, my dear brothers and sisters, you will come across verses responding to these fundamental questions. So if anyone claims to have a deen, then your deen should be in a position to respond to these four fundamental questions in your life. The first one, chapter 2, verse 35. Dean responds to our beginning. What's our beginning? Am khuliku min gayri shay'in am humul khalikun. Were they created from nothing or they created themselves? So Dean responds to the question that your origin is Allah. Inna lillah. Meaning what? My origin and beginning is Allah. Second response. Dean respond to where we are going to. Chapter Mu'minun verse 15. Fumma innakum ba'da thalika lamayyutun. Fumma innakum so after all this movement of this world, what happens? You're all going to perish. So Dean responds to that. That my ending is Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. So they said, Inna lillah is descending arrow. 
wa inna ilayhi raji'un is ascending aru we all descended from allah and we will surely or slowly but surely ascend to allah we all relocated from allah and we are in this dunya partially and not permanently and eventually we will go back to our origin so we are from allah and to allah is our return now the third question dean response is what the link between the beginning and the end question i ask all of you what is the link between our beginning and our end who can tell me any response we said beginning is allah our ending is allah now what's the link between the beginning and the end huh? okay he's saying imam he saying mouth so we said mouth is good but as i said so mouth is the ending we're going to allah wa ta'ala what's the link between the beginning and the end Allah, for Allah is the beginning, Allah is the end, I agree. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajun. Mullah is saying a hayat. Yes, hayat is true, I agree this life. But what is that? What is expected of us? I know my beginning, I know my ending. Now here, what? Amal sali ahsan to me ibadah. Wa ma khalaktu al-jinna wal-insa illa liabudun. So the link between the beginning and the end is servitude to Allah. It's ibadah. You look at Surah Al-Inshiqaq, verse 6. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal insanu, inna ka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqi. O insan, you are forever toiling towards your Lord. Each one of us is toiling. Where? To Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. Some toil in a good way and some toil in a bad way. But at the end of it all, our ending is Allah. What is important? How I end. That is the link. Now, last question. Dean responds, isn't it? My purpose of existence. Why am I here? Don't say Ibadah. We're done with Ibadah. Why here? Who can tell me? What's the purpose of your existence? Huh? To build your akhirah. Okay, yeah. So, Ibadah, I build my akhirah. I agree. To build your Ibadah, I build my akhirah. Mullah. Okay, Mullah is to organize Allah. To Aina Shida is to organize Allah. And then what? From my mother. Ah, Santum. Surah Al-Mulk, verse number two. Tabarak al-ladhi biyadihi al-mulku wa huwa ala kulli shay'in al-ladhi khalak al-mawta what? Liyabuluwakum ayyukum ahsanu Jazakallah. It's not just ibadah while you are here. It's to see who will perfect his action. Meaning what? You become a true manifestation of Allah's beautiful names and attributes. That's why you are here. Allah is Rahman. You are expected to become a true manifestation of Rahman. Allah is Razak. You are expected to become a true manifestation of Razak. So if anyone asks you, Deen, 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 Konche, what is this Deen? Deen responds to four fundamental questions beginning the end link between the beginning and the end and the purpose of my existence done with that let's go to sharia i want i don't need to get confused we're trying to discuss what is the philosophy of religion that's the first stage of my examination let's go to sharia what is sharia who can tell me Oh, okay, okay, eh, oh, okay, okay. Cobra, cobra, Samro. <laughs> Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad. Wa ali Muhammad. Muhammad. 
do you like it when I do interaction or I, I, I go? Which one do you like? Interactive session or I go? Grrr. No, no, seriously. Which one do you prefer? Okay. Otherwise, I can go. Grrr. It's your choice, really. You should tell me which one you want, then we finish. Kwisha. Sharia. What is Sharia? Okay. Uncle is saying, Osolo din foro odin. You have a point there. You have a point. But I'll pack it somewhere. I'll come back to it. But you have a point. Any other response? What is Sharia? Eh? Yeah, I know SOP. <laughs> I know SOP. You know, at least we are attending Jamaat meeting always. We hear SOP every day. <laughs> Mashallah. That's the quickest way of saying it, man. SOP. That's good, man. <laughs> Classic, man. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that one also I, I pack it somewhere, we'll come back. Any other response? What is Sharia? Eh? Ah, Uncle saying set of guidelines. True. But even Dean, sort of some guidelines. But you're right. Any other response? Sharia? Eh? Way of life. So he said Dean, way of life. Now Sharia is also way of life. Which is which? You're right, you have a point. But remember this. Deen is different from Sharia. And as I mentioned, all prophets of Allah came with one deen. But each one of them came with Sharia. I think one of you gave a literal explanation of what Sharia is all about. Some practices, guidelines. No. Sharia is made up of four components. The first component you mentioned, uh, but they don't say Usul, they said Akida. Akida. What is Akida? What is Akida? Faith, belief. Tawheed, Adala, Nubuwa, Imama, and then Kiyama. Thank you. That's the first component of Sharia, Akida. Second component of Sharia is Kanun. What is Kanun? Rules, laws. But in Islam, we have two types of laws. Can you remember what are the two types of laws we have in Islam? This is a class. We are doing a class. We have two types of laws, Bio. Huh? Oh, this is highly mystical, Habibi. You're right, but this is highly mystical. So he said we have Takwini and Tashri'i. That's strong one. That's true. But then, in a very layman terms, we have general laws and you have specific laws. What is general laws in Islam? Who can give an example of a general law? May Allah bless you. Salah. Salah. It's a general law. They call it Kanun Am. What is a specific law? Example of a specific law in Islam? Amru bil Maruf. Because it depends on individual circumstance. But Salah, even with a twinkling of an eye, you can do. You can't up, you can chill on your bed depending on your circumstances, and then you do. But Amr bil Maru, for you to do it, you need to tick certain boxes. I cannot just come and say, Yallah, hey, haram, jahannam. No, I need to make sure you tick certain boxes. You understand? There are people I mentioned earlier on in Juma, they have boarding pass to enter to take everybody into jahannam. Certain boxes must be ticked before Amr bil Ma'aruf and Nahayi and Il Munkar. So therefore, the second component of Sharia is Kanun, law. What's the third component of Sharia? Hukuk. Rights. When Islam says rights, what, what do we mean by that? Right in Islam simply means what? Legalizing relationships with, between people. That is hukuk. Hukuk 
is a component of Sharia within Islam. Guess what is the last component of Sharia? Who can tell me? This you need to know. What's the last component of Sharia? Okay, Uncle uh, Mullah says, yeah, example of that will be responsibility. The last component of Sharia is akhlaq. So this four make what Sharia is all about. So therefore, understand, we have religion or deen, and then we have what is called Sharia. Now fast forward. What is the philosophy of religion? Well, that's the first stage of my examination. Uh-huh. Okay, uncle is saying guidance towards the right path. True. Philosophy of religion, yes, it gives us guidance, it helps us. But I want to go into something deeper so that all of us can go out with something to reflect on. You know, that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I want you to pick up something, reflect on it. If anything is not clear, please reach out to me. It's very important. Philosophy of religion, what do you understand by it? Okay, uncle is saying submission to Allah. These are all good. These are all manifestations of the philosophy of religion. Now you see, to understand what philosophy of religion, you need to differentiate between the knowledge of philosophy and philosophy of religion. Ilm ul falsafa and falsafa to deen. When we say ilm ul falsafa, knowledge of philosophy, what is philosophy? Philosophy is the study of existence as existence. So in philosophy, you look at existence in general. You look at types of knowledge. You look at types of illa, cause. And of course to us, the cause of all causes is Almighty Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. That is ilmul falsafa, philosophy. We've got nothing to do with it here. Our business is with what? Falsafa to deen. Philosophy of religion. Like to say, what is the philosophy of language? Or what is the philosophy of akhlaq? So you can ask these questions regarding so many fields of studies. You know, when we talk of a philosophy of a religion, we are, or philosophy of anything, we are talking of analyzing that particular thing, not within that field, but within different fields altogether. What do I mean? Say, for example, somebody asks you, what is the philosophy of language? To appreciate the philosophy of language, I need to know the history of language. The first language spoken. Was it written? Was it spoken? Where was it? This will help one appreciate the philosophy of language. Now, what is the philosophy of religion? It's to help us understand the history of religion. That's number one. Number two is to help us appreciate the social benefit of religion. And number three, philosophy of religion is the understanding that each and every practice that we undertake in our religion, they are all under one family. You do salah, you do fasting, you go for hajj, you pay homes, they are all under one family. There is no contradiction between each and every practice we undertake. In fact, all the practices we undertake, they are there to complement one another. So that at the end of it all, I and you become true servants of Almighty Allah. But there is one point here I want to draw your attention. When it comes to the philosophy of religion. And this is the crux of the matter. You see, philosophy of religion, of course, has so many dimensions and components. But there are two I want to refer to. One dimension of philosophy of religion, you know what they call it? They call it makasidu sharia. And then makasidu deen. What is makasidu sharia? Makasid is the plural of maksad. Mullah, what is maksad? Huh? Aim, the destination, the ending, where I want to go. So, 
we have what is called makasidu sharia the end goals of sharia and then we have makasidu din the end goals of din these two where do we study them we study them under the philosophy of religion understand this point brothers and sisters okay now you pray in salah you are fasting you are attending majalis you are doing charity you are volunteering this and that what's the end goal habibi what is the end goal how many years you've been praying salah how many years you've been fasting how many years you've been giving charity how many years you've been giving homes what's the end goal for my mother what and so what what so in philosophy of religion we tend to learn the end goals of sharia and the end goals of teen now question what are makasidu sharia end goals of sharia i'm sure by now you have understood what sharia is all about what are the end goals of sharia oh subhanallah uncle is saying sirat al mustaqim sirat al ladina anamta alayhi وغير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين right it's true we want sirat al-mustaqim so the fact that you are doing that sharia act you are on sirat al-mustaqim but what's the end goal of being on this sirat al-mustaqim that's good to exemplify the characteristics that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala want us to have that's excellent to become a true deputy and khalifa of Allah on earth. To feel the presence of Allah wherever I may be. Not only when I come to Imam Baraka. Not only when I attend the majlis. Wherever I may be. Regardless of that place. I feel that my neighbor is Allah. That's very powerful. So now let's qualify this. And goals of Sharia. There are three. Please, I beg you, remember this. So that whenever you undertake any Sharia act, you are mindful of the end goals. Otherwise, how many people are active but less productive? It's not about being active. It's to be productive at the end of being active. There's no point. you active praying, 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 and at the end of the day, the end goals are not achieved. The first end goal of Sharia is for one to be able to build solid relationship with Allah. Huh. That's the first end goal of Sharia. I am praying, I'm doing everything. What? I want to build a relationship with Allah. And as I mentioned, what is to build a relationship with Allah? To feel Allah down deep in my heart. Have you seen a situation sometimes when you stand, Allahu Akbar, you feel like your soul is ascending. You are so attentive. I'm sure all of us, one way or the other, had this spark before. But there are times, even Imam started Fatiha, you think Imam is taking too long in that Fatiha. There are times we feel Salat is boring. But there are times, you know, I want to go and do more, more, more. So bottom line, first end goal of Sharia is called Makasid Sharia. I remember this. is to build solid relationship with Allah. That's one. Second end goal. And of course, there are so many verses of the Quran. Because of time, I don't want to talk too much. Look at Taha. Verse number 14. Allah says what? Akim salat al dhikri Establish prayers through my remembrance. Meaning what? The end goal of this prayer is to keep remembering Allah, whether in salah or not salah. Hence, Quran tells us, chapter Mu'minun, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ True believers are those, regardless of where they are, they are still in salah. Salat is not this. This that we do is prerequisite to salah. Allahu Akbar, Sami Allah wa Namda, prerequisite to salah. What is salah? Inna salat tanha anil faksha iwal munkar. Salat is to make your akhlaq the best of all akhlaq. There is no point. I stand here so humble, determined, 
Then the moment I get out, I open my mouth, I offend the people. It means your salat has not been accepted by Allah. Look at it this way. The best and the most important part of our body is this. Face. But Allah says, heat it on the less important thing I ever created, which is earth. Why? Because Allah wants you to be the most humble out of all. So that's the first end goal. Build the relationship with Allah. Why am I sitting here? Why are you coming every night? Why others are watching online? Wallah, the end goal is to find Allah. I want to find Allah. I'm lost. That's why we are here. Otherwise, what's the point? I can go and do something else. You can go and do something else. You decide to come here. This is the target. This is the end goal. So I'm going to keep striving. I'm not going to give up until and unless I find Allah in me. And that's why Abba Abdullah tells us in Dua Arafah, you know it very well. What has he lost who has found you? And what has he found who has lost you? Second end goal of Sharia is to build a solid relationship with the community. With people. That's the second end goal of Sharia. Baba, you busy practicing and you can't keep simple relationship with people. Chapter Asr. Watawasaw bil haqqi. Watawasaw. That's the second goal of Sharia. And that's why mystics say, we go to Allah through people and we go to people through Allah. Service to people is service to Allah. You cannot say namazi, namazi, but akhlaq you bankrupt. So many deficiencies in our akhlaq. That's the second end goal. Guess what is the third end goal of Sharia? Is to build the relationship with the nature. Environment. Nature. Quran tells us. Look at Surah Al-Mulk verse 15. Huwa alladhi ja'ala lakum al-arda thalula. Famshu fi manakibiha. Wa kulu min riskihi wa ilayhi nushur. He's the one who made this earth tamed for you. Subservient for you. So that you can walk on it. And take the benefit from this. So we need to build the relationship with this tabia, with environment. So these are what they call makasidu sharia. Now what are makasidu deen? What's the end goal of deen? Who can tell me? End goal of deen. What's the end goal? I'm a Muslim. Okay, fine. What's the end goal? Can anyone tell me? Is to please Allah. Ah, so ah, to get the pleasure of Allah. Somebody say Jannah. I know we all love Jannah. May Allah take us to Jannah, inshallah. That's a good one. But end goal is what? Is to connect the beginning and the end, as we mentioned. That's the end goal of deen. So what is the to connect? You all mention it. To perfect my action. I just don't do any action. I want to perfect it. So when you talk of the philosophy of deen is to appreciate your religion so that that religion manifests in your life. So this is one. Number two, here you need to answer these questions. Because we are now delving deeper into the sermon of Fadak. I'm sure all of you went through this sermon before in your lives. There are some powerful lessons in this sermon of Fadak. And as I said, it's one of the main legacies of Sayyida Fatima alayhi salam to her lovers and followers. How many of you have read this sermon? Can you raise up your hand? Don't worry. Uh, whatever we discuss here remains here. Apart from only my voice. How many of you have read it? Okay, so very few people. It means this is a challenge to all of us. 
We have only two nights for me to finish. Make sure you go through Sermon of Fadak in your own ways. The first line I would like to introduce myself and all of you to tonight in this sermon. Is how Fatima alayhi salam introduced herself to the people. You know what she said? Ayyuhan nasu, i'ilamu anni Fatima. He said, oh people, know that I am Fatima wa Abi Muhammad and my father is Muhammad. Let me read to the next line and then we'll stop a bit. I will not take much of your time. I am Fatima. And my father is Muhammad. You know what she said? I say it again. Look at the language. Beautiful. He said, whatever I say, it is not false. Whatever I do, it is not wrong. Then you know what she said? She recited, لَكَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Then she said, فَإِنْ تَعْزُوهُ وَتَعْرِفُوهُ تَجِدُوهُ أَبِيدُونَ نِسَائِكُمْ If you assist him, meaning the prophet, and you know him, you will find him my father and not the father of your women. Now question. Why is Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam saying to them, no, I am Fatima and my father is Muhammad. Aba Abdullah alayhi salam when he went out, Ana Husayn ibn Ali in Karbala, I am Husayn, the son of Ali, Imam Husayn al-Abidin, when he rendered that powerful sermon, I am the son of Zamzam. I am the son of Safa and Marwa. I am the son of Mecca. Why? Don't the world know that? These are the sons and daughters of the Holy Prophet. So if somebody asks you, what comes to your mind? Quickly. What comes to mind? Can anyone tell me? That I'm Fatima. My father is Muhammad. But all these people, they knew that. What was she trying to say? Huh? Eh? I'm pure. Okay, that's good. Uh huh. Introduction of. Yeah, but they knew. They all know. It's like you come here, uncle. You've been in this community for many years. Everybody knows you. Okay, I am this. My father is this. What are you trying to say? Ah, she's trying to say, go back to your senses. Wake up your conscience. You prayed behind my father. You chanted the praises of my father. It seemed you were lying. I am Fatima. And my father is Muhammad. That tells you the level of oppression towards Fatima. You know, when you deal with your sons and daughters, sometimes you don't want to give them some words. You understand? So, but father, why? You don't get it? You know, sometimes like children, you, can't, you don't get it, father. So, Fatima, salamu alayhi You don't get it. Why this level of zulm? Why this level of oppression? I am Fatima. My father is Muhammad. She's trying to say, I am one of the chosen ones. Inna Allah has tafa Adama wa Nuhan wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al-alamin. Allah chose all these people. Ala Ibrahim. She's trying to say, I am one of the descendants of Ibrahim. That's number one. But you see, number two lesson we extract from this khutbah. Kindly pay attention to this khutbah. Sayyida alayhi salam referred them to the history of prophethood. You know what she said? Allahu Akbar. Fara al-umama 
kafira kan fi adiyaniha that my father saw the ummah divided in their religions when the holy prophet came they were divided me me they would go to kabristan and this tribe will say my tribes are here they are better than your tribes until allah says hatta zurtum al maqabir fara al umam firakan fi adiyaniha that he saw you so divided ukafna ala niraniha he saw you secluded around your fires abidat li awthaniha my father saw you worshiping small idols munkirat lillah ma irfaniha my father saw you denying allah upon all the knowledge you have about allah and look at what she said fa anara allah bi muhammadin zulmaha then allah tabarak wa ta'ala illuminated you and illuminated your darkness through the light of muhammad that's what fatma said wa kashafa an al qulub buhamaha wa jalla an al absar gumamaha that's fatima for you he said what did my father do he removes any animosities from your heart is this what you pay my father with so on a second level fatima alayhi salam referred them to the history of prophethood but you know on a third level allahu akbar she referred to dia injustices wa antum fi rafahiyat min al aish but you are in a good condition of life expecting the return of pains to the family of the holy prophet but you know the end what she said very very painful was amtum allah khiz wa tali and you claim i don't have any share wala irsali min abi i don't have any inheritance from my father wala rahima bainana what are you doing it's like you claiming that there is no any relationship between me and muhammad you know what she said to us the end she asked them a question fa hal khassakum allah bi ayatin akhraja minha abi you doing as if there are verses of the holy quran allah revealed about you and removed my father from it so fatima alayhi salam in this khutba my dear brothers and sisters she drew their attention and referred them to their oppressions and that is why there is no stronger document when it comes to the life of fatima than this document of fadak The last few lines I would like to draw your attention to in this sermon. You know Fatima she spoke or she spoke of Usuluddin in this father sermon. You all know Usuluddin, isn't it? How many Usuluddin do we have? Five. What's the first one? Tawhid. She spoke about Tawhid. She said wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah kalimatan ja'ala al-ikhlas ta'wilaha He said I bear witness there is no god but Allah but she said this word the real meaning of it is sincerity Then you know what she did she spoke of adala Question what is adala Yeah that's okay that's the translation What is Adala One who was just I agree I, I agree 100% but 
Okay, Mullah, very good. Putting the right thing in the right place. That's good. Eh? Fairness, fine. What is Adala? These are all good answers. I agree. If it's exams, you'll get all the marks. Expectation of reward, uncle. If it's exams, I'll give you the mark. But you know, Adala is what? Adala is a manifestation of absolute perfection. Allah is absolute perfect. And so his manifestation is to be just. Kamal al Mutlaq is one. Since he's one, then he's absolute perfect. And since he's absolute perfect, he has no choice but to be just. But you see, absolute perfection has four dimensions. And Fatima alayhi salam mentioned all these four dimensions in that sermon. The first dimension of absolute perfection is what? Independence. Richness. Gina. Beginning of the khutbah, she mentioned this. I know you read the khutbah, you'll find it. Ibtada ala ashia'a la min shay'in kana kablaha. He said he originated everything. Not with anything before it. He originated everything without pre-examples. Today, whoever thinks he invented something is because of somebody's example. So that is Allah's independence. Fatma mentioned it. The second manifestation of absolute perfection is wisdom, hikmah. And Fatma mentioned it. She said, Allah, he did whatever he did. It is to stamp his wisdom and to demonstrate his wisdom to the people. The third manifestation of absolute perfection is what? Adala. Justice. Where she said, ثم جعل الثواب على طاعة والعقاب على المعصية in that khutbah. That Allah tabarak wa ta'ala Promise reward for being obedient to him. And then the last manifestation is what? It's a rahmah. That she said in the khutbah. Allah promised. He will take the true servant to his heaven. So that's adala. What is the third component of Usuluddin? Nubuwa. Fatima mentioned about Nubuwa. She said, Wa ashadu anna Muhammad al abduhu wa rasuluhu. اختاره قبل أن انتجبه وأرسله. He chose him before he sent him. She said. And she said, he picked him before he named him. And you know what she said? He selected him before he appointed him. Read this quote. I beg you. It's wallahi, this khutbah. It pierces the heart of the true lover of Fatima. Wallahi al -adim. Wallahi, I'm saying this. It's a very powerful document that Fatima, salam alayha, poured her heart in this sermon. So that's Nubuwa. Now, what's the fourth one? Imama. We're finishing just now. What's the fourth one? Imama. You know what she said? Said wa imamatana nidama lil milla. Fatma salamullah alayha. She said, Our imama, our divine leadership is the system of a community. Meaning, if you want to have a good community, the system of that community must be imama. But then she mentioned another line towards that. She said, and being obedient to us is amana lil firqa. It's a shield over divisions. So if you say you love Fatima, and I say I love Fatima, there must be no any division. And the last, of course, she mentioned about Qiyamah. She said, Fanim al hakamu lillah wa zaimu Muhammad wal mawid yawm al Qiyamah. He said, the only judge is Allah. And the leader is Muhammad. And the promising time is Qiyamah. 
In conclusion, brothers and sisters, you know, Fatima in the Kutuba, she outlined what I mentioned earlier on. Those makasidu sharia, the reason for every act of worship we undertake. Tomorrow, how many youth have these questions? Sheikh, why are you doing this? Why are we doing that? What's the purpose? Wallah, it is in the kutuba. And she divided religious practices into two. Said one is internal, meaning it has internal existence. And the other one, it has external existence. So the external existence is the one that you practice with your body. But the internal one, you just need to believe. So beginning she said, فَجَعَلَ imana تَتَهِيرَ اللَّكُمْ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ That Allah tabarak wa ta'ala made the iman as a means of purification over polytheism. That's why you are a mu'min. So that you are shielded, you are protected from shirk. And then she said, وَالصَّبْرُ مَعُونَةً عَلَى إِسْتِعَابُ الْعَجَرِ that Allah Taala says that when you become patient, that patience becomes an assistant for you to gain reward from Allah. And the last two, she mentioned salat and fasting. Of course, she mentioned hajj and the rest, but I'm just mentioning salat and fasting. Why do we make salah? Who can tell me why salat? We've all prayed today. Or oh, we've not prayed. We've prayed for sure. Why, why Salah? Why, why are we praying? Huh? For humility, yeah. We mentioned that earlier one. For humility, true. And other one? Submission to Allah. Salah, why do you pray? Yeah, follow the Sharia, I agree. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> you are right, uncle. The fact that you pray meaning you are following the Sharia. Will you pray, uncle, if Allah sent Imam Zaman tomorrow to you and say, you know what? Salat zarur nahi. <laughs> it's a choice. Will you pray? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Samro, Samro. <laughs> Will you pray tomorrow? Allah sent Imam al Zaman. He said, Salat no, is not wajib. No, if you want to do fine, you don't want to do no big deal, really. Jannah is there. Will you pray? <laughs> ah, Hajira. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So if tomorrow Imam Zaman comes and says, you know what, there is a new revelation. Yeah, yeah no, no, he said this is a new Sharia coming. <laughs> because you see, we have what you call Siratul Mutasharri'a. So we believe Alul Bayt, they are Mutasharri'in. Like you mentioned, we lie to taqwiniya, we lie to tashri'iya. All of they've got authority over sharia. They are Allah's representatives to us. Whatever they tell us, like today when Sayyid Sistani mentioned something, we follow, isn't it? So, Alul Bayit, alayhi salam, salam. So in fiqh, uh, in usul, one of the proofs to do something we call Siratul Mutasharri'a, the life of the Mutasharri'a. Maybe Prophet didn't say it. Imam, uh, Imam Jafar didn't say it, but Imam acted. The fact that Imam did, we follow. So if tomorrow, Abu Saleh al-Mahdi, this hypothetical question, really, he comes to you, let me ask the youngster. Imam Zaman come to me and say, you know what, Salat, don't worry, man, bro. Chill, man, you have a choice. Will you pray? No, no, Imam said, no, now it's a choice. It's not wajib. It's not wajib. It's a choice. Will you pray? No, no, no. <laughs> this one is heavy. We'll do it another day. Uh, uncle, will you pray? Yeah, that's uh, solid. He said, no. no. But Imam is not saying don't pray. He said, it's an option. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, ah. 
Yeah. No, it's not saying don't. It's saying, you know, it's a choice. Yeah, some do sell out the leg. Good point, but some do sell out the leg. Okay, uncle. Okay, very good point. Last one. Yeah, but Imam Zaman said, you know what? Chill, don't worry. You have a choice. Will you pray? No, no, uncle. Maybe, yeah. Huh? Maybe we'll wait when the, when the wire comes first. <laughs> eh? Subhanallah. That's true, man. Eh? Subhanallah. 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 Absolutely. So he's saying that this salat that we do, it reminds us. Obviously, you know, this is an hypothetical question. I don't think it will happen. Obviously, this salat we're going to continue until Qiyamah. But, you know, if hypothetically, Imam comes and says, you have a choice. Obviously, the best action plan, I'm saying it doesn't mean that I'm going to do it if it happens, but the best action plan is to follow the route of Al al -Bayt. Imam Ali says, I'm not praying because I want heaven. I pray because Allah deserves to be worshipped. My praise is just to say, Allah, thank you. That's why I'm praying, according to Imam Ali. I'm not praying because there is heaven somewhere I want to go in. Of course, this is Ibadah to Shakirin, this highest level of Ibadah. And that's why, you know, we have a tradition from Imam Ali. That this dunya, wherever you look at it, it is the masjid of the true lovers of Allah. So, ibadah is not only this salah. Even your state of mind, if it's connected with Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, is an act of worship. So, Fatima alayhi salam, last point, she explicitly, wallahi, brothers and sisters, highlighted on why salah. You know what she said? Was salata tanziha lakum min al kibr. He said, Salah is what? It's a cleansing for you from arrogance. That's why it's definitely a contradictory situation when I pray and I'm still arrogant. It's not possible that the Holy Prophet tells us, As Salah to Me'raj al Mu'min, when you stand there to pray, your soul ascends to Allah. And by the time you finish, it comes back, you go out as a humble servant of Allah. So you cannot be praying and you are not humble. The last you said what? was sawma tathbita lil ikhlas. That fasting is to do what? Is to make you sincere. So please, brothers and sisters, let us try and hold on to this sermon. And as I said, we are in Ayami Fatimiya. We have just two nights to go. Dedicate some time. Maybe you and your family can sit down. Read. This sermon, you will come across so many powerful Statements and teachings from Fatima alayhi salatu wa salam. And at this point, I invite one and all brothers and sisters, let us take our hearts to the holy city of Medina. And remember a few lines of the Masa'ib of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. As we are told, the first shahida in the way of wilaya and imama is Fatima to Zahra, salam Allah alayha. And the first gum and pain of Fatima is witnessing the death of her beloved mother, Khadija al Khubra. Not only that, Fatima, as young as she was, she saw them eating grass to survive. At Sha'abi Abi Talib. 
And you know one day, Khadija Salamullah Aleha was sitting next to Ummu Ayman. And tears began to overflow from the eyes of Khadija. Ummu Ayman looked at Khadija Tal Kubra. She said, Ya Khadija, why the tears? Khadija said, I am not crying because I'm dying. I'm crying because it is the wish of every mother to be around during the marriage of her daughter. But I'll not be there to witness the marriage of Fatima. But Khadija said to Ummu Ayman, it's not only even witnessing the marriage, it is the wish of every mom that on the day of the wedding of her daughter to give some gifts to her daughter. But I don't seem to have anything to leave behind for Fatima to Zahra. But you know, narration tells us one day, Khadija was sitting next to Fatima. And she said to Fatima, Fatima, I have one request. Young Fatima, four years, five years, she said to the mother, Mom, what is your request? She said, Fatima, can you go and ask your father that when I die, he should shroud me with the Aba'a he normally wears when he receives Jibreel. Fatima went to her beloved father. She informed him. The Holy Prophet said, Yes, Allah build a place for Khadija in Jannah. Fatima, tell your mom, I will shroud her with my clothes. Khadija departed from this world. Rasulullah came to bury Khadija. But when Rasulullah used the cloth to shroud the Khadija, the cloth was too small for Khadija. Rasulullah made dua, Ya Allah. I am your prophet, Rahmatan lil alameen. Here is my beloved wife, Khadija. I am here to bury her. Help me, Ya Allah, with kafans to bury her. Narration tells us, Allah sent down five kafans to Rasulullah. Rasulullah asked Jibreel, what are these five kafans for? He said, the first kafan you said to bury your beloved wife, Khadija. What is the second kafan for? He said, the second kafan, use it for you. They must use it to bury you, Rasulullah. What's the third kafan for? Allahu Akbar. Allah. The third kafan is for the lady whose ribs were broken. You know, as one poet mentioned, there are two people whose ribs were broken painfully on earth. One, the ribs were broken when the person was alive. The other one, the ribs were broken when the person was no more. Whose ribs were broken when she was alive? We're talking of the ribs of Fatima Zahra. But the ribs of Abba Abdullah were broken when he was no more in this world. When they sharpened the hoofs of their horses and they began to trample on the body of Abba Abdullah. Rasulullah then asked Jibreel, the fourth kafan is for who? He said, the fourth kafan is for Allahu Akbar, is for Ali ibn Abi Talib. Shaheed Mihrab Masjid Kufa. Then he asked him, then the fifth kafan, which is the last one, is for who? Allah Akbar Jibrail said, the fifth kafan is for Hassan al Mushtaba. <laughs> then the Holy Prophet asked Jibrail, where is the kafan for my Husay? <laughs> Jibrail said to Rasulullah, Hussain will be slaughtered like a sheep. Hussain, there will be no kafan for Hussain. Jibreel said to Rasulullah, because Yuzbahu Wahid and Farida, he will be slaughtered alone in Karbala. And that is why Imam Rida tells us, Allah, they did not kill Hussain, they slaughtered Hussain. Allah Lahnatullah, Allah Lakaum with Valimin, Inna Lilla, or Inna Ilayi Rajaun, Matamel Hussein, Yah Hussein, Yah Hussein.